Welcome back to Sports Extra with me, Ahmed Nawaz. Time now to talk about the game of Kings and its polo. Now, uh, there's a lot to polo. You know, technicalities are obviously there, but I think it's very important for us and for our viewers as well to understand the history of polo. Where did this game originate from? You know, what's the history? And then, of course, it started in Pakistan. So there are things over there as well. But definitely, if you want to know all of these things, you cannot have them by yourself and you just can't Google it. You've got to talk to a person who is a polo player. And for that very fact, we've been joined tonight on Sports Extra. Very honored to be uh, with him in studios. And he's going to be talking to us regarding the game of polo. None other than a polo player who is here with us in studios. His name is Umar Amir. Umar, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for having me on the show. Amir. Great to have you on the show. Umar, first of all, uh, people want to uh, definitely know about polo. So what, what's the history of polo if we talk about it? Okay, so Winston Churchill once said that a polo handicap is a passport to the world. And he was very true about it. But the origins of polo do not lie in Britain. Mm -hmm. They lie in Pakistan, Northern areas. So the Turkic armies, when they came to Pakistan, they brought the sport with them. And since then, for eight centuries, polo has been played in those areas. When the British colonists came, they uh, sought liking to the sport and they took it to their own country. The British aristocracy over there, they framed the rules of the game. And since then, it has been played over there in a regulated manner since around the mid-19th century. But uh, the origins, again, as I said, are in Pakistan. And Pakistan is the place where the polo uh, basically found its roots. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, uh, again, there has been an increase in trust in polo. And uh, new players are coming in. The patrons are starting to fund it more. And you can see also that uh, polo players from foreign countries are coming in and playing in Pakistan. So it is a sport which has found uh, liking once again in the country. Uh, Umar, if you talk about yourself, when did you find a liking towards this sport? Because obviously, uh, younger lot growing up, we don't have a majority that's very much interested. And for you to be interested in polo, like you know a bit of history about polo, and then knowing the technicality. So when, when did you find out that, okay, I want to be a polo player? Right. So I've been riding since uh, quite a young age. Uh, but I took up uh, polo around six years back. And uh, since then, uh, I've played in Lahore and in Islamabad as well. And I've seen uh, the sport growing and mushrooming in a way that uh, other sports aren't. For example, our national sport, hockey, mm -hmm. it has been hampered and you can't see a very, very well regulated infrastructure in that sport, unlike polo. Because polo is a sport in which individual patrons, they fund it rather than organizations or the state taking responsibility. So I've seen uh, this uh, a, go a good trend in polo because of individual funding of the sport. So, um, and the Pakistan Polo Association, hats off to them, they have uh, played a great role and they have regulated the sport, they have organized tournaments even during the times of the pandemic. Mm. The sport has been ongoing, the tournaments have been organized, uh, the SOPs have been followed and the crowds are being entertained in the sport. So, uh, I mean, uh, the, I can see a very bright future for polo. What's the most challenging aspect of uh, polo? Obviously, you need to learn riding, so that's got to be one of the basics. But where do you see the biggest challenge for a polo player? Okay, so, uh, I, I mean, it's basically a game of 70% of the horse and 30% the skill of the player. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the better the horse is, the better uh, it's taken care of, the better it is groomed. And uh, that is where I think the key to a successful uh, polo uh, player lies in. So you can see players uh, like Adolfo Cambiasso and Facundo Perez, they have their own stud farms and they rear and groom the horses and give them the right kind of, uh, right kind of uh, training and grooming in such a way that uh, you can see that uh, their horses are the best in the world and they are sought after. Even uh, Adolfo Cambiasso, who is the top player in the world, he is cloning the horses so that uh, basically he does not have to breed them rather than clone and get this exact same replica of the horse that he has been playing in mm -hmm. beforehand. So, uh, I mean, the key of a uh, successful polo player lies in the horse and uh, this, the basically the synchronization of the player with the horse. But that's very interesting because I think that is one of the key elements that we see that your horse has got to be well equipped and the training aspect of it, training the horse, not just yourself, is very, very important and definitely that's got to be one of the uh, primary challenges when we talk about polo. Uh, you know, growing up, whenever we've talked about polo, then the Shindur Polo Festival has been talked about a lot for us. And uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, like you were telling us that uh, there is a bit of a difference when we see Shindur Polo Festival and uh, the uh, other sport of polo which is being played around the world. So how can we differentiate between these two? 
the Shindu Polo Festival is basically a no rules barred kind of event, <laughs> <laughs> unlike the regular polo. Extreme sport. It's <laughs> an extreme sport. Even the American rodeo would look like uh, a crockett, ga game of crockett in front of the Shindu Polo Festival. Unlike uh, the regular polo, because the regular polo has basically a uh, whole uh, a rule book uh, which mm -hmm. I brought here as well. Mm -hmm. This is the rule book which governs every aspect uh, about uh, every play. It's so, a pretty big book indeed. <laughs> indeed, it is quite a, a length of rules. Mm. So, uh, basically, there are rules uh, for if, if someone crosses the line or if someone is not 30 yards off when a hit and is taken place or even if someone misbehaves with the referee, there's a technical foul. Mm. So, uh, these rules are framed and they were basically framed by the British after they adopted. But in Chindu, it's still the original form of polo which is played. And uh, you can see other differences as well. For example, there are six players on the field compared to four players in the mm. regular polo field. And uh, the field itself is different as it is 200 by 56 meters. And uh, the regular polo field is around 270 by 150 meters. And also the intervals are different because in a regular polo game, it's seven and a half minutes per checker. And in the Shindu polo festival, it's 30 minutes per checker. So the horse stamina is also of a completely different league. The horses used are completely different. They're not the regular horses which are used uh, in, for example, the regular polo because uh, their stamina, their agility, their turning, their uh, dynamics are different from the ones which are used mm -hmm. in Shindu. So, I mean, it is a, a completely different, two completely different games. For example, rugby and American football, you can uh, say that even though they look similar, but they are very different, different. Very different. They are very different with the rules and with the players. Uh, the training and the entire setup, it's a completely different thing. It's completely different, but I like the fact how he mentions that in Shindur it becomes one of the extremist, uh, uh, you know, an extreme sports, that's what it becomes. But, and you can see that obviously if you see the visuals as well, jam-packed horses, dust flying around, so that, that is there as well. Uh, Umar, definitely when we talk about riding and polo, then uh, the ratio for injury must be uh, a big one. So, uh, how would you rate that? Because obviously, uh, once you're in this sport, if you get injured, then the rehab and everything does come into effect. Right. I mean, uh, I've seen, uh, you know, a fall every other game. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, the player, they hit in the goal post, for example, or sometimes uh, they get off balance or sometimes during the ride off, uh, they are taken out and uh, they fall. So uh, I've seen p uh, people getting uh, injured, but uh, despite that, they, for the love of the game, they continue to play and uh, they get mounted again and continue with the sport again. So, but I mean, injury is part of the game because it is a risky sport and uh, one has to take the risk when they're mounted on the horse. And we definitely cannot shy away from the fact that it becomes a very expensive sport indeed as well. Yes, that's true. That's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, the expenses, they are usually catered to by, as I mentioned earlier, by individual patrons, mm. in the case of Polo, rather than organizations or rather than uh, the state itself. So it's the individuals who are basically funding the sport. And Omar, if you talk about uh, Polo clubs in Pakistan, uh, obviously we have to consider that they play an essential role as well, because obviously you need a Polo field to play and the club has a very pivotal role. So could you name a couple of clubs that are there and uh, how frequently can we see these clubs uh, expanding as well? Right. So the oldest club in the country is the Raul Pindi Gazan Polo Club, that is uh, located obviously as the name states in Pindi. And uh, then there's the Lahore Polo Club, mm. which is uh, quite renowned because the standard of polo there is quite high. It organizes the National Open, the highest uh, handicap polo uh, tournament in the country. In Pakistan. In right. Pakistan, right. Mm. And then there's uh, the Lahore Gazan Polo Club. It has right. four fields and it has also started uh, a new field uh, in, uh, in the outskirts of Lahore. So it is also a new club and also Sambad Polo Club, mm. uh, it has taken off uh, in the last four years mm. and uh, it has a great field, it has a great view. So these are uh, the four prominent clubs that I can mention. Definitely. Umar, thank you so much for your detailed analysis of polo. I think our viewers have really got a lot and I've actually got to know a lot more about polo than I did before. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Right. Thank you for having me. And the rule books has a lot. So definitely if you want to know more about polo, then uh, Umar has shown us a book that you can get your hands on and definitely know more about polo. Uh, but I guess this is all for this.